Welcome to the podcast The Embodiment Talks, a podcast by the Embodiment Lab with Mujon van Opijnen. Taking your role as change agent of societal or education systems requires vision and courage. This podcast will help you take this pioneer's role with more body awareness and confidence, without losing sight of the connection with others. We dive into how we as humans are hardwired, how systems change works, and how both are related. I will take you on my own quest, and I will share background information, talk to experts, and share exercises. We will think, feel, and act. Great that you're here, and happy listening. Great that you're listening again to this episode of the Embodiment Talks. And today I'd like to inquire into a question that I heard today. And the question is, what do we need to let go of to make change? And I thought it was really an interesting question to look at because it gives us a perspective on the past instead of on the future. Often when we think about um, societal change and making change we look forward what's what's the world that we want to create whereas this question actually asks from us to dive into what is it that we carry and that doesn't serve us when we look forward into the future so what did we pick up in the past and what does it take to let go of that, um, of that baggage that we carry? Um, and and um, so, I thought it would be would be interesting to inquire into that because, of course, I've been inquiring into this question the whole day since I've heard it. And um, uh, so, I'd like to take you on my inquiry into this question, and that brought me first to think about what actually is letting go and i know that letting go is such a buzzword word where okay you need just need to let go of it and and for a long time i thought like okay great that you want me to let go of something can you please provide me with the guideline as well on how to let go um until i i discovered for myself like I can only let go of something if I fully embrace it if I fully acknowledge that that is something I actually don't want to have because if I if I don't acknowledge that there's something I don't want to have it will it will continue knocking on the door because it wants to be seen and everything that we do um that's based on patterns there's something underlying the pattern that wants to be seen and it's it's and especially behaviors or thoughts or um, whatever that we don't like um, we tend to fight it and if we fight that actually the thing that's underneath of a desire of something that we then also don't acknowledge. So, um, I can either so if I if I if I let go of something, I if I really fight it, I I fight it from a certain victimhood, and um, so to really truly create change from an, a mature perspective or, or a mature responsibility is something else than fighting something I don't want to have. And that is in my personal life, but it's actually the same when we come to societal change. So if I want to create change because there's something that the system does to me, and therefore I don't like the system, so I kind of fight what it does to me, and then I, I start creating something new from that victimhood, from the system. So it's actually um, a a young me that then tries to create that change. So often when we depart from that more victimhood perspective or from the little me who wants to make change into the system, 
there's a lot of blaming of the system there's often a lot of anger in that energy as well and um and so that's not taking responsibility for it in a mature way um, uh, to actually create change and um, and then I kind of fight the system so I let go of something because there's something that I do not acknowledge so I can for example fight the system because I don't get equal opportunities as males um, males do and um, uh, and then I would really disregard the old system because it's not providing me in my own desires or my own longings. Whereas I can also acknowledge like, okay, we've created a system here that doesn't treat everybody equally. So can I create from a completely different energy, like showing like, okay, if we do it this way, maybe then it it will be different. We can um, uh, treat everybody equally, and already when I talk about it, I can I can sense the difference in energies, and I try to inquire in what is actually exactly that difference. And in one, it's the blaming of the system. There's anger in it, and um, and there's not an opportunity for dialogue as well, because the old system is not good so i don't want it and there's no acknowledgement in it whereas in the second option in thinking about solutions uh from a from a more mature energy i would there would be still space for um dialogue and it would also acknowledge that whatever change that i'd uh, propose will have an effect on somebody else and um, and in such a way that you know it may scare others off you know it um, change can really really touch our existential um, life our existen existential questions and um, and the more existentially the change that we propose is the more it will trigger people in their survival mode and the survival mode is really their primary reactions to um, to change and um, so and that is also for us we can also as change agents we can also be um, triggered in in that survival mode And yeah, to understand it a little bit deep, deep, deeper or better, I, I'd like to dive into like how how do this how does this neurologically work? And um, so we develop our neurological pathways or the, the how we behave and how we think and what we say and um, uh, what we do everything in. Um, and the main patterns, the survival patterns that we have in our first seven years of our life. So, which means that the, the family that we grow up in, um, including school and our culture, determines in a large way on how we react to change. And the more existential change is, the more we will be tri triggered in those um, survival mode, so the survival, the survival patterns, and um, and how that how that works is that in our in our family where we grow up, we have certain we have certain desires, and they met or they not met, and um, and and we learn that some survives, some desires will be met and some will not, and that will be different for everybody. So in, if I'm a very energetic child and I go out there and, t and play and get dirty and um, live my full toddler energy and then I come home with my dirty clothes and my mum is like oh no what have you done you're so dirty and you shouldn't get so dirty or whatever and she want, doesn't want to hug me because um, I'm too dirty then after a while I will learn like okay I better kind of um, hold that energy a little bit inside because I, if I go too wild my mum will get angry and I, I need to be loyal to my mum because I need her for survival 
And um, it's the same if we, if we grow up in a very talkative family and um, I always have to shout very loud to be heard and say a lot and talk fast, then um, we, we, we learn that that is how to start doing things. So if things get, if we get really triggered, we may start talking really fast and loud and a lot and um, not being able to listen anymore. Or if we learn to, um, to really hold that energy because every time when I speak, I will not be allowed to, then we may get very timid. And as soon as it gets really challenging, the rest of our life, we will get timid. So that's all different reactions that we can have. And that is all what we do to remain safe and to be loved in the system that we grow up in. And this is repetitive. So um, as we are in that family, this will be the same pattern all the time. Every time when we live our energy, we will be... Um, taught to actually kind of keep it in and that is with that repetition we create neurological paths so anything that happens if it's not really severe and shocking happens only once we can kind of recover from that um, and now I'm talking about development patterns which is different from shock trauma patterns but I'm not going into that in this podcast so we're paving our path and obviously we have that field of grass and if you walk the same path all the time you will start um, noticing that there is a path so every time when we get triggered we will take that path that we know so well and that's so visible on the grass so when we want to create new pathways on the grass that needs the same repetition so if we want to come to change and let go of old behavior that means that we need to repeat the new behavior that we want which is great if we are relaxed but which is very hard when we are triggered or stressed or um, whatever so then it really needs willpower to create those new neurological paths and to do things in a new way until it really becomes a new, um, a new habit. So what we have seen now is that um, uh, to come to change and to, to answer the question, what is it that we need to let go of to make change, um, is that we first of all need to acknowledge and have compassion for that what we have to let go. Um, the second thing is that it needs repetition. And the third thing is that I would say that we need to grieve. And um, it's often what we forget that, and there's two ways of how we can grieve about um, uh, letting go of, of the old and that is first of all that we may have to let go of things as well so I may have a really secure job for example that I have to let go if I come to societal change and change makers are the front runners so they often um, uh, they may not always be liked by everybody because they give ideas that there's kind of that sensing like hmm, there may be something interesting in there but oh that's too scary to go, um, come to such fundamental change so I rather don't do it so it's a lot of that resistance that they often um, encounter so it's it's the grief of um, the system the security the things that we've been told like at school already we, we are taught that this system that we currently have is the best system that we can have and it was going to provide us with the safety that we need and um, and and then we find out that it doesn't so there is also the grief about that the things that it hasn't given us so the, the desires our longings for connection that was lost in this current system for example so there's grief about letting go of the system and there is grief about um, how that it hasn't provided us in all we wanted it 
to provide us in. And that it may not have given us the safety that we um, um, that we are looking for in the um, in the system. So, okay, so that actually brings me to th three aspects that I inquired into today. If I look at um, societal change, and what we have to let go to actually come to that, which is acknowledgement and compassion. Um, for whatever I want to let go, which is repetition to come to something new. So, and especially in in stress situations that needs will needs needs willpower, and to allow for grief about whatever we have to let go or what the system hasn't provided to us. And and looking at these three things that we need to embody ourselves. It also means that we have to ask the other. So if we want to come to societal change, it's, we can't do that by ourselves. We can't just put ourselves in a completely different system and, um, uh, and exclude us from the current system. We are, because we are part of this current system. So whatever change we'd like to come to, it also... We also asked others to kind of do the same. So it's good to acknowledge as well that the other, sorry, the other also needs to, um, uh, to needs to let go, and that we um, have compassion for that as well. Because um, as as we kind of embody the new system and feel into it, that may not be true for everybody that will be taken into this change as well. So they may have to discover along the way that there may be good things in it, but they may not feel that um, at the beginning. Okay, great. Um, this was my inquiry into this um, question today, and I hope um, that, that it gave you some insights as well. And I'm really, really curious to hear what... Um, what other insights you get from this question so please feel free to inquire a little bit deeper into this what do we need to let go of to make change thank you for listening and um, see you in my next podcast great that you listened to this episode of the embodiment talks Please let me know your thoughts about this episode or the insights that you gained. Email me to the address in the show notes. If you want to get in touch with me or if you have a question or topic that you want to know more about, don't hesitate to send me an email as well. Do you want to be kept up to date? Like this podcast in your favorite podcast app. You can help me by giving a thumbs up or leaving a comment so that this podcast will reach more people. You can find more information about my work on my website www.embodimentlab.nl or my YouTube channel Embodiment Lab. Thanks for listening and meet you at the next episode.